So today we are talking about employee experience and what is it? How do we design it? Um, and I would like to start with what is employee, what employee experience is not, because I have seen a uh, lot of companies started to um, have these titles in their, within the HR team. And, but when I look into it, only a very few company, ING is a big one and it's a really good one, are the ones who, uh, or oh, very few companies are doing it properly or understand what employee experience design is. So let's start with what employee experience is not. So employee experience is not about relabeling, labeling and retitling um, human resources. Um, HR is very famous about, you know, giving themselves and changing the titles, but doing the same task and the job. So employee experience is not about HR being given a new title. Employee experience is not about employee engagement and entertainment. So I have seen, I have spoke to a head of employee experience person here in Dubai, and I ask, so what do you do? How do you do this employee experience? And she says, yeah, I'm looking after employee engagement. I'm like, okay, that's, that's not that. Employee experience is, is not HR, is not people operation, is not workplace design. Um, employee experience is really all about, it is, is a new way of looking at how we intentionally design end-to-end -end processes, policies, uh, to create desired um, leadership behavior, really that those are the ones that impacting employee experiences. Um, I will go into it a little bit uh, more in details, but um, the first things that we need to ask, and yesterday I had this conversation with, uh, with the company owner, and I always urge HR and anybody, when there is something new comes to the market, because we are bombarded by new initiatives, new policies, new ideas, the first question is always, do I need that? Do I need employee experience? So my answer to this um, company owner last night was, I'm like, Let, let's ask the question, do you need it? And he said, I don't know what it is. I'm like, look, if you answer no to this, then you should be answering no to the question, do you need to look into your customer's experiences as well? Because it's exactly the same, looking into your employees' experiences and then design them in a way that is suitable for the company, that for the employees, and that it's viable, it's feasible, and it, you can implement it, and it makes sense to your organization. So, do we need employee experience design? I think we do because not looking at employees' experiences, we know where it led all of us, right? We are run by policies, procedures, and humans are being overlooked. Um, so let's go back to a little bit more about what is employee experience. So this approach is a very, or, or um, employee engagement approach, right? When some companies are focusing on employee engagement, it's a very narrow focused um, because it's just measuring things that are not related to those policies, systems, leadership that are creating employees' experiences. Employee experience comes from the interaction of employees with the organization. And the organization is basically the policies, the systems, the practices, the culture, the, re the leadership. So we need to look at those rather than asking questions related to employee engagement. Employee engagement is just a tiny little part of employee experience. And the good news is when you implement employee experience design, you can, it, it makes kind of um, employee engagement, DEI, uh, well-being redundant because now you are looking at because employee experience experience design brings everything together. Um, so it actually makes things simpler because it gets rid of a lot uh, gets rid of a lot of um, in, in interventions. It looks at really the culture, the leadership, the compensation, and 
One more thing that I would like to talk about is I have seen also that they try to automate it. Um, they try to digitalize it. Employee experience design, design is a creative process. You cannot. And that's the beauty of employee experience design because you get to design what your workforce need, what your organization needs based on their unique characteristics, location, size, culture, whatever you want to achieve, right? So employee experience design is really using design thinking principle that is human centric and user specific, right? Um, what is what is the need of human behind these process? What, what are the needs of humans behind these processes? Um, so it is really a human centered approach and therefore you cannot digitalize, you cannot put it in the, in the system and make it, you know, technology driven. This is not what it is that we issue employees with another application and tell us how you feel. That's, that's not what it is about. It's really solving that companies, you know, what finding the problems in terms of employee experience and then looking at solution that is desirable for by the employees and maybe in the event for the companies, feasible and viable. Um, basically, it, can it be become part of a sustainable practice? Now, let's get into, and somebody just started to drill in my building. So if you can hear that, you guys, I'm so sorry. There is a refurbishment going on, apparently. Now, let's get into the part how we, how we, how we look at it from attracting talent all the way to exit. Because you remember, this is the end-to-end -end process of looking at employees' experiences. It's not just one step, it's not just employee engagement, it's not happiness, it's not well-being, it's not DEI, it's, it's none of them. It brings it all together. And I think this is the beauty of it because it allows us to see when we do this properly, to see where are the problems in employees' life cycle. Because none of these other data telling us where we have the issue, right? Now, the first things that we, the first thing that we do um, when we design employees' experiences is we, we need to collect data and we need to check what our employees' experiences are today. Now, let me tell you a very quick story. Last month, or this month, sorry, I went to Saudi for an employee experience conference and I gave a speech and I was the last one during the day. So I got to listen to everybody, um, all these um, the, um, employee experience experts and, and people who started to implement this process. Now you remember, none of us are doing it properly because it's very, very new. Um, so I got to listen to how they do. And it was just framework after framework after framework after dashboard after dashboard. I was so bored. I'm like, oh my God, this is a human-centric approach. And where is the human now in this process? So I've stepped onto the stage and I said, I'm like, okay, I have heard all the academic theories behind employee experience. I have seen every dashboard and KPIs there is in HR. There was nothing new. Basically, they came up with a new phrase of doing things. So going back to the beginning of this um, session, it's employee experience is not a new title for HR. And I said, I'm like, okay, tell me about the experiences of your employees today. And the whole room went silent. Nobody had the answer. I'm like, how can you even think about designing my experience when you don't know what are my experiences today? Maybe you don't need to do anything because I'm happy as Larry. Right? I'm, maybe I'm happy with everything. So let's just start with the question. Uh, what are our employees' experiences today? So the ways we, we help organizations is really is um, like four, five, five different ways. Um, we have a toolkit, an audit toolkit, and then we can send it. You guys, if you want it, I can send it over. Just drop me a message. 
and they can figure it out. There is a book I just published, so it talks you uh, through it step by step. The second way is, is for human resource professionals, it's really a 12 week coaching program where we coach them through the whole process. How do you design your employees' experiences? And we really just show them the way. Then um, the third one is the full day, which they really like employee experience workshop, because then we drag HR and managers and leaders into this uh, workshop and we show them how they impact employees' experiences, because this is not just HR's job. HR is just going to design the processes, but who is going to do or create those experiences and impact most of the time uh, are the leaders and managers. So we cannot exclude them. It's not HR's job. The, the fourth way is that I'm doing right now for an FMCG is I'm auditing their processes and I'm going to start it with that in a minute. I'm auditing the process and I will tell you how it looks like. And then the, the, the fifth way of doing it is really we partner with the business three to six months, depending on the size and what they want. And we design it for them because most of the businesses don't have the resources, the time to do that. So we go in and we work with them for, for months. So the first way of uh, the first thing to do is that we collect data. What are our experiences today? And we collect three different type of data. So I work with another um, company which ha who developed a robust uh, data collection uh, platform, and it's all about employee well-being. But it looks at um, employees, it looks at the engagement, it looks at the financial well-being, their social, their physical, um, looks at leadership, which employers really like, because the whole thing, the system breaks it down per department. And then you can see which department is facing problem in terms of financial rewards, in terms of bonuses, in terms of uh, compensation, in terms of leadership, in terms of long working hours. So then we can really go and fix the system because that's what we are trying to do, not fixing the individual, but fix the system because that is also supported by Oxford University's um, study that came out this year that well-being initiatives that are focusing on the individuals are not yielding any result, but those are the ones who are fixing the system are the ones that have massive impact. So the first one is we collect qualitative data. The second part of this audit, it's most of the time it takes us a month, is the qualitative data. So we go around and we interview employees. We interview them about um, you know, generic questions that are really not captured in this qualitative data because there's a lot coming out of your uh, of employees when you sit down with them one to one and really start reading uh, behind the lines. Uh, this is all anonymous. No employees are being compromised within this um, in this process. And then the third part in the data collection is the audit process, which is in the toolkit, which I mentioned. That I can send it to you. Which, is, which audits the HR processes. So what do you have in, in place? Um, and now we would have the answer, what are our employees' experiences with when they are interacting with us today, right? And from then onwards, the design process starts. And then we can ask the question, how do we want employees to feel when we attract them? When, we, when they go through the recruitment, when we develop them, when, when they are exiting the organization. And what is it that we can do in order to create that feeling or that experience? And this is the basics of employee experience design. So how do, we, how do they feel today? It's like a relationship. If you are in a relationship, you need to ask, how does she feel about me or when, you know, being about uh, or being in this relationship? Okay, she's not very happy. Fantastic. Why? Let's ask her. And then from then onwards, how do I want to make her feel? So then the first step, a uh, fourth step, what is it that I can do to make her feel this way? It's really that simple. Now let's go through the seven areas which the book and, and, and the toolkit also goes through. Uh, so you remember, you cannot design employee experiences without data, without knowing how they feel today. So then um, we go through um, the seven stages. 
So basically, we start with attract. And what is the current experience? We would look at that, right? And what can I, what can we do? How do we want people to feel about our company? And what is it that we can do to change, change or, or achieve that? So one of the companies uh, looking at, uh, we looked at the their website, right? Uh, it was not attractive. I asked the CHI, I'm like, how do you think I feel when I look at your website? And she goes, what's wrong with the website? I'm like, the colors are already putting me off. I'm like, this, these colors are telling me that people, old people are working here with old school mindset. And she looked at me, she goes like, you can't say that. I'm like, this is how I feel. I'm like, is it the demographic that you are trying to attract? And she goes, no, I would like to attract young people. I'm like, okay, I'm not young, but I'm already being put off by this, uh, the color and how it looks. So looking at those, right? What is the application process? Does it take a long time? I really loved one of the companies because what they decided to do, because they don't hire many people every single year, right? They hire maybe a hundred person per, per year or hundred people per year. And they said, you know what? Nobody is really visiting our website. Um, we just want to stay with on, on LinkedIn. So they put on the website, hey, all of our jobs are listed on LinkedIn. We appreciate and respect your time. Every, every job is with the easy apply button. Just pop your um, uh, CV through to us. Very lovely, kind message. You know what, when I look at it, I'm like, okay, I, I like the company. They respect my time. They acknowledge that we don't need to go through this process because guess what? We have data that how many applicants are dropping out when we ask them to put their data into create their account, upload the CV, then the system is broken and it's not, and people are abandoning those um, applications and we are losing talent. Some company went straight, we don't want to have any kind of job advertisement, we will be going out to find those 50 people per year. And it works because then you don't flood your ATS system with thousands of CVs because it takes exactly the same amount of time going through thousands of CVs than to go and search on your LinkedIn and target the candidates that you actually want. So using your resources well, but in mind that you are creating employee experiences because who doesn't want to be wanted? Right? Imagine you receive a phone call or a message on LinkedIn or an email. Hey, Sylvia, I looked at your profile. We really, uh, you have, a, you know, we really like your profile. Would you like to have a conversation with us? So it's not down to being uh, so outsourcing your recruitment. You can do that online. Inst and because it takes the same amount of time sorting through thousands of CVs or just approach 10 people, which takes an hour of your time and take it from there. So, and that creates a really good um, employee experience. Now let's move on. There are a lot more to the attract, to be, which is a massive, massive issue. But let's move on to the, the uh, hiring process, right? We know the hiring process are, is a terrible. People are being ghosted, um, interviewed wrongly, the interview structures are horrible, and people are just not having a really good experience when they are interacting with our recruitment processes. And that includes the recruiters of the hiring managers as well during interviews. Because if you pay attention online, what they are saying, it sometimes takes ages, sometimes they never hear anything, sometimes the, the, the salary is being advertised this much, but by the time you finish your recruitment or the interview process, the salary is dropped. So you hear everything. And these are the things that we need to listen to. And then they also talk about the interaction with the interviewer, that they are incompetent, the questions they are asking. So for example, and, and I had this conversation, you do not need a DEI initiative in your company just to be able to put it on your, on your website. Because if you design your processes that is not free because it's never going to be free, of, but eliminate or, or limit bias, discrimination, through designing those questions that your interviewers can ask, then you don't need your DEI. If you are look, if you are accepting, if you, for example, let's say, send me your CV without your picture. 
not i would like to see that instead of a dei you know whatever logo that we that we do uh in, in, in under this, these initiatives these are the things that i would say so we start uh, recruiting um, and selecting people based on their competence and talent rather than anything else right so as you can see if you design your processes you don't need those initiatives because you immediately cover those areas. Now let's go to onboarding because we had 10 minutes. Onboarding is the crucial process, right? And now obviously each of these areas you would measure and that creates your final score. So you don't need your employee engagement score, but you need your employee experience score. And that's the beauty of this because then you could go into these areas where the lowest score and then fix it. And by the time you fix one area, the other will drop. So then you can go and fix that. And by the time you fix that, you can go to another one. But that's, that's the job. You're never going to have, okay, it's all set up, it's ready to go. No, that constantly need, needs uh, fine tuning. So on board. Most of the time we have massive onboarding issue, right? Training, um, resources are not available. Sometimes employees are showing up for the first day. We don't even have a desk for them or an access card or Outlook. How can we design that? In my last job, I designed, I think, a fantastic one uh, onboarding program that they really felt that we were prepared for them. They were felt welcomed and they were pre they felt prepared for the job because we have done so much prior to arrival. So we had uh, we sent them welcome email. We sent them their first month duty roster, their first 30 day um, training plan, detailed one, we introduced them to the departmental trainer, to their manager. And on day one, when they arrived, they were like, oh, Sylvia, you are the one who's sending me emails. I'm like, yes, lovely. That's me. So they already knew me, you know? And they already knew their line managers and their departmental trainers because there was already a communication between us and not just one, hi, but we already asked what is your uniform size. So we prepared that prior to arrival. So really when they arrived, everything was ready. Isn't that a very simple thing to ask? And sometimes we fear that. And then I created the survey 15 days and 30 days out into the onboarding and from there, I gathered so much information that I had to go and fix because one of the departmental trainer wasn't really good. Okay, let's go and change that departmental trainer. Well, in one area that we didn't have shoes, safety shoes for the kitchen. Why is it not? Then I realized that there is a supply chain problem. So you can fix so many things during uh, with these surveys. Then motivate. How do we motivate employees? Uh, when you move away from engagement, you really, uh, or when you uh, lean into motivation, you really don't need to move to uh, deal with engagement because engagement is, 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 you can't impact it. It's very little impact you have on how emotionally attached employees are to the company. And it comes throughout the year and it comes from so many aspects that we can't even have a control over. But what they can do is train managers and leaders how to how employees are uh, or how to motivate employees and how to create motivating environment, right? And human motivation is backed by science. Employee engagement is just run by the rules of thumbs of the, the business. It's just a made up story and we know it's made up because the employee engagement uh, needles haven't moved for three decades. I j literally, I just r uh, read Gallup's, Gallup's latest survey. It's just not moving because there is nothing scientific. So the scientific world has already said to Adam Grant, who is an organization psychologist, that, hey, man, why are you keep pushing this, you know, employee engagement saga? It just doesn't stand the scrutiny when scientists start looking into it. So let's go with science and let's teach employee or managers and leaders how to motivate employees rather than this untangible up in the air kind of engagement that none of us know actually what to do with. Even or us who actually looked into it. We don't have a clear definition. So it's different from one company to another. It's, and it's un, not measurable. Performance, how do we want them to feel during about the performance? So clear performance expectations, clear performance measurement. How, how do we do that? How do we achieve? It's very, very important. And how do we 
manage their performance. It's not necessarily about an annual appraiser, but if we need to do the annual appraiser because we can't get rid of everything, right? How do I want my employees? So this is the manager's training and leader's training comes into the picture. How do I want my employees to feel during that annual appraisal conversation? Because we know that everybody is just like, oh my God, why are you making us to do this, right? So we ruined the process. There is nothing wrong with the process. The process should work, but human beings. So can we acknowledge the fact that human beings come into these well-designed processes and we ruin them? And there is nothing wrong with it because there is theory and there is real life. And I think this is where we lost touch. We can't reconcile the two. Um, how do we develop employees? So how do we want to make them feel about the personal development? Do, we want, do they want us to tell them and guide them? Do, we want, do they want us um, to just provide resources and they, they will be autonomous and independent in their learning. What is it that we are going to provide? And there is nothing wrong. I work with one company, a construction company, and say, they said, we're not providing any development, only skill training that, is, uh, that enables them to do the job. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's like the Ryanair concept. Be honest what you are going to give and people will be happy with it. It's a contract. Hey, lovely, this is what you get. Are you happy with it? Yes, fantastic. And that's it. But promising things, but then not doing it. We're going to develop you. You go through this elevator program. You go through this management program and then never going to get anywhere because the position that you want with your, problem, uh, with your program, they promised, is just not available. So... They were very conservative and they were very proud and said, I'm like, do it. You are very black and white and clear about what you provide. Nobody can question that. And when people say, look, it's no longer suitable for me because I want to develop and grow, they're going to go to somewhere else. And there is nothing wrong with it. Don't be afraid of losing employees. And the last one is exit. How do we handle, how do we want employees to feel during their, their departure? And that's very, very important because I ask one of the leaders, I'm like, do you have, and that's part of the toolkit, the audit toolkit, do you have an employee experience recovery strategy? And the person looks at me as if I was a crazy person. I'm like, yes, we need that because things go wrong, but you still want to keep employees. So they changed um, not, not them, another company. They, for example, they looked at employee exit interviews that had dishonest and useless. The data was were completely useless, right? Because employees don't have a good experience with employee exit interviews. So they decided to do the exit interview and the check in two and four weeks out or, or after departure. And guess what? Now it's nine months into the process and they have really good data because people, they, will, they let them, okay, go start the new job, you know, settle in. And two to four weeks later, HR reaches out, hey, how is the new job? Just wanted to check in with you. And also if you have time, you know, um, tell us your experiences with, with, with us. Because by the time, even if something went wrong, people come down. By the time they also see that, hey, the green is not, uh, the grass is not greener on the other side. So then they have comparison. And guess what happened during these nine months? Three employees came back to that company. Three employees because they did not treat them as, okay, you go, you don't like it here, bye. No, they checked in and they actually managed to get some useful exit interview data that they went back to one of the managers actually and, and figured out that a lot of problems are coming. So that manager is currently being coached and I think soon might be departing from the organization. So that's that. Um, I see if there is one question, um, tell me, Umber, um, and then we're going to end here. No, nobody? Hello. Hello, it's Umber, and I am uh, sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Sylvia. Would you be kind enough to repeat it? Tell me. Sally. Sylvia. 
Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. Uh, nice talking to you. Okay, my question would be: You're talking about honesty. There is such a thing as being too much honest, and that can also put a spanner into anything that uh, your life is going through, especially careers. So yeah, that would be my question. What is the question? Uh, how to control the uh, being too honest part? There is there is honesty and this there is dishonesty. There is no too much honesty for that. That's 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 to me. So yeah, well, you can either tell the truth or you don't tell the truth, and that's that. Or you lie. So that's these are the three versions of it, right? But let's not assume the worst of everybody because I think this is where we all go wrong. People are going to use the system, abuse the system. People are going to lie to us. They are going to tell us the truth. It's a complex situation, right? But when we approach it with, uh, with the intention of make, creating better employee experiences, then you know what? It's not going to be a black and white and straightforward um, intervention because human beings are very messy and very complex and you will have problems. I think this is where we make a, a mistake and we're going to end this here, where we expect it to be easy and smooth and straightforward. Guess what? By the time you finish or solve one problem, another five is going to arise. And now, and because, but, but that's the job, you know? Human beings, that's why I always say, if you don't want to manage, lead people, or you don't want to deal with people, don't be in these roles because human beings are super messy. But I think that's the, that's the beauty of it, right? And you can always just go back and see what happens. And then, you know what? You want honesty. Because without getting the real information, you will never be able to solve any kind of problem. So this is where I, how I would like to close it, you guys. I hope it was helpful and useful. Employee experience design, start with how do they feel today, collect data, and then see where you are, what do you, how do you want them to feel, and what is it that you need to change. Remember, none of these HR policies and processes being sent by God, you can take them all out and start again. So don't think and follow others. Do what makes sense for your company. Thank you very much and enjoy the afternoon. Bye, you guys. <laughs> Thank you.